That is so fetch. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kaya and today we are finally diving into Metallica. The time has come y'all. This is our third thrash daddy in the big four. So, you know, we've already done Megadeth, we've done Slayer. It's Metallica time. So we are doing five different songs. Four of them are off of different albums. Two of them are off of one album. That's, that's the structure. Um, so I want to give a shout out to Alonzo Tarango, Tarango, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, one of my awesome subscribers and a very consistent recommendor, I guess you could say. Um, Thank you so much, Alonzo. These are all of your suggestions today. We're putting all of our faith into you um, for today's video. I'm very excited. We trusted Steven with death and he did not disappoint. So uh, today, thanking Alonzo for um, all of these songs we're gonna be listening to today. And it's gonna be a fun time. I don't know anything about Metallica. Never listened to them. The only thing I know is that my mom is a huge fan and um, based on like what y'all have sort of said is that they haven't really released anything good in a while. They kind of fell off, they had the fame get to their head and uh, and they it really affected their music which is always a damn shame with artists. So if you disagree by all means, let me know down in the comments below and let me know what you think about more of their current albums. Um, from what y'all said, uh, their projects up until 1988 were their best. So that's where we're gonna, that's where we're gonna cap it, okay, it's 1988. So without further ado, let's get into the video. But first, hit that subscribe button. If you want to, um, you can also join up my Discord, the Mosh Pit, down below. Um, if you want, let me know more stuff about Metallica. You know the deal, okay? Y'all already got it, so let's get into Metallica. bar music. I'm just like imagining myself in some like abandoned bar, honky tonk, like drinking. That little lick he had right before the Spurs was delicious. And I like the, the vocal effect he has. It's definitely giving me like um, Black Sabbath vibes. <laughs> Oh. 
callback. It's not a callback, but I love that. So come on, that layer. Just, I feel like live, this would be really fun. Um, just a good old school thrash metal track. It's very simple. It's very basic in terms of like instrumentation. Uh, it's definitely more, you know, after everything we've listened to, this is like a good intro, good calm intro, you know, she, this is like laid back metal for me. This is like summertime, cookout, metal, you know, uh, really good guitar riffs, definitely catchy chorus. Um, the vocal effect he has, I like it. I also think it's a little much because it's kind of hard to hear what he's saying, but I'm just also not used to the track, but I also really like it. Um, you would turn off comments on this video probably because your fans are mad at you. No, you probably have diehard fans, I would assume. Jump in the fire. Jump in the fire. Little chain. the end was so good. It was delicious. He was just like playing with those strings, showing them a good time. Mm. If you've tried, like if you're a guitarist, tell me is that, have you tried to learn that solo? Is it like easy or is it hard? Because that was really good. Um, what am I feeling about this song? I actually really like it. I mean, I, I of course I like it. It's old school, like I said. She's she's a soft banger, based on what we've listened to. You know, it's a good summertime banger. Good introduction. Very simple instrumentation wise. It's just as far as the layout goes. Um, nothing too extreme. Technical technicality wise. Um, yeah. I'm mad about it. I actually really like this song, and I could definitely hear myself, hear myself, see myself, listening to this more. Let's look at the lyrics, shall we? Look at this dope ass. That Satan drawing is like so cool. So the new season of Stranger Things just came out. Well, that's why we're repping the shirt. 
Um, if you hear a dog barking, it's not mine. That's Zuzu, my neighbor's dog. Jack Russell Terrier. We love Jack Russells, don't we? Um, so this Satan drawing, though, is, like, dope. Jump in the fire. Um, down in the depths of my fiery home, the summons bell with chime, tempting you and all the earth to join our sinful kind. There is a job to be done, and I'm the one. You people make me do it. Now it's time for your fate, and I won't hesitate to pull you down into this pit. What is this about? Don't show me an ad, please. I don't care. Uh, Jump in the Fire is a song by American heavy metal band Metallica. It was released as the second and final single from their debut album, Kill Em All. Oh, the single was accompanied by fake live performances of Phantom Lord and Seek and Destroy, which were alternate studio recordings with sounds of a crowd overdubbed it. Interesting. Alongside Hit the Lights and No Remorse, Jump in the Fire is one of Metallica's first original songs, having been included on Ron McGovney's 82 Garage demo. Yeah, that was one of the demos that they did. It was like some like garage demo with a bunch. Of, is that the one with like a bunch of other bands? I think it has a different name. No, I think it might be the same one. Um, an unreleased recording. The original lyrics and content, which dealt with sex, were written by Dave Mustaine in his former band Panic at the age of 16. Damn. And Dave Mustaine is Megadeth. Yeah. It's so weird that they're, like, connected. It's like a galaxy that's, like, I don't know, it's like an alternate universe. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dave Mustaine. The original lyrics and content which dealt with sex were written by Dave Mustaine of Megadeth and his former band Panic. So that was before Megadeth, age of 16. The original version that Mustaine introduced to Hetfield and Ulrich, upon joining Metallica, was raw. The three worked together on refining the song, and the final outcome is what is heard on the demo. However, much like the events surrounding the Four Horsemen, new lyrics were written by James Hetfield upon Mustaine's departure from Metallica. The new lyrics revolve around people being damned to hell and therefore jumping in the fire. Lars Ulrich, Ulrich claims that they had written the song to sound like Run to the Hills by Iron Maiden, which was popular at the time. Current live performances since 2004 are in D standard tuning as opposed to E standard tuning. Interesting. I, I'm i surprised they did a fake live, uh, live album and just added like crowd noise to it. That's kind of cool. I mean, I guess, like, at this time, they were kind of gaining popularity, but maybe they hadn't, like, performed a big enough show or, like, had the opportunity yet to, like, record big crowd sounds. I don't know. So come on, jump in the fire. What is this? The devil is forcing them to jump in the fire. Uh, really liked this song. So the next song we have is called Creeping Death from Ride the Lightning. And this is their next album, which came out in 1984. Ooh, yeah, this album cover looks so cool. I love Metallica's logo. What's it that they're like? Hold on, what is this? Oh, is that an electric chair? <sighs> The electrifying Metallica album that changed metal. Ooh. That looks like an electric chair. Am I just like super wrong about that? Who knows? Take me back to the early 80s. Already it sounds 
very mega death. <laughs> Which we have to sort of, you know, Dave Mustaine at least had some part in making this. Yeah, they changed the lyrics, but, you know, in this earlier Metallica stuff, I have to remember that there were influences of, of Dave Mustaine in this. Um, I really like the stops on this. return so let me return I don't have the lyrics in front of me but the way he's saying it so let me return and uh let me ta, ta, ta. it's interesting definitely a bigger sound um still very like stripped down um which is again not a bad thing uh Really catchy riffs, and this one feels a little bit more technical, like there's there's more movement through the song. I feel like I'm slouching so low. Sorry. God, I feel lady, have better posture, okay? <laughs> uh, really catchy riffs, and the melodies that he's doing within the verse, and this, I guess this is a chorus now, very catchy, something that you can kind of sing along to. Um, got that grit. The car is relentless here, too. Ooh, I love that he holds the snow, too. They've got the chance in the verse. I really, like, my brain wants harmonies or something in this chorus. I hope that they give it to me because it's, mm, it would give it the, the, you know, you're going to hate me for saying this, but it's almost, it, the chorus is reminding me of Journey. Uh, ugh, the vocalist for Journey is just out of this world. But the harmonies that they've got in, in their choruses, separate ways, okay? Like I said, Stranger Things just came out. They had an amazing version of Separate Ways to open up the first episode, which has just gotten me more into Journey's music. Side note. But, mm, I feel like this chorus needs some harmonies. So let me return, let me down. Something like that is what he's singing. <sighs> I think it's died.
fine. Wow. The result? transition the guitar solo that he had in there he was exploring all the frets man all of them and then I love how he's just like doing all these super quick notes and then he opens it up and there's a -da -da -da, something like that this really nice melody just holding out these notes also throughout the song he's holding out notes and like stretching them out before we go into another verse and it's kind of what he did here before we go into this bridge part which sounds super good it's almost like king kong style drums mm. beautiful transition beautiful breakdown great solo i'm here for it this sounds big dude Reminding me of Morbid Angel. Let me die. I love. Ugh. So let me so emotional that ending oh I don't know what it was about that -na 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 -na. and then the like -na 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 guitar solo it was kind of like way up here is kind of almost angelic I don't know just that felt super like climactic <sighs> okay I still feel like I'm gonna cry or yawn. I think I'm just gonna accept a yawn instead. Oh, please, tears don't fall. Jesus Christ. 
Sorry, Lord. Um, uh, okay. Great. That song was amazing. Creeping Death by Metallica. There were so many really good transitions, and I really liked the ending. Ooh, I like the, the photo they have for this single, too, with, like, the skull. And I love what they did with their logo. Oh, it's almost, like, Indiana Jones-esque, or, like, it reminds me of, like, old-school Jumanji. I don't know. Ride the Lightning, based on the story of Passover, based on the story of the first Passover from the book of Exodus, Creeping Death is a brutal retelling of the story of the angel of death. When the Pharaoh refused to release the Hebrew slaves, God sent down an angel to take the lives of every firstborn child unless the house was marked with blood. The title came from a comment bassist Cliff Burton made while watching the film The Ten Commandments. The guitar riff in the bridge was written by lead guitarist Kirk Hammett when he was only 16 years old and was originally used in the Exodus song Die By His Hand. Dude, what, what is it? With these thrash metal bands, these big four, technically it's the big eight because y'all also said Creator, Testament, Exodus, and I think there's another one. Uh, there's others. Megadeth, Slayer, Anthrax, and Metallica are in there. There's like eight big four metal bands. And they're all like interconnected somehow. It's like they're all there. It's like they're their own Stranger Things crew, and then they all just like broke up into different bands. I don't know. That's cool that it was originally used in Exodus. Sorry for the yawn, y'all. Mmm. Oh, I'm just happy to be here. I'm also tired. I've had so many gigs this weekend. I had a four hour gig the other day. I didn't get home until like 1 30. I played 8 to 12. Just intermission. Hi, honey. Oh, making the cameo, Mr. Fat Boy. Come here. No. You wanna see my dog again? You wanna see Mr. Boy? Oh man, here's my big spoon. Oh, big size. This is Spooner. I love you. Hold it up, honey. He's gonna try and get into his crate. Don't knock down on my lats, boy. Oh, are you okay? Your crate sounds. Be prepared. Lay down, honey. Um. Man. Oh. He wrote that when he was 16 years old. 16. Musically, it was one of the songs that came quickly and then became its own thing just as quickly. Lyrically, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with the movie The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. He didn't have a v We didn't have a VCR, so James and I went down to Cliff's parents' house with The Ten Commandments. Oh, now Coda's in her crank in this. And we sat and watched the movie. There's a scene where Moses goes back to try and get his people out of Egypt, and when the pharaoh ran a Renages, Ren, uh, I don't know, on that, the firstborn must die. Then this fog, I thought it said frog, God appears out of the moon and comes down and starts creeping across the ground, smoke machine style, and everybody who's caught in it falls over and dies on the spot. That's where the words creeping death came from. If you watch the Ten Commandments and read the lyrics, there's definitely a similarity interesting so let it be written so let it be done i'm sent here by the chosen one to kill the firstborn pharaoh's son i'm creeping death die by my hand i creep across the land the bridge was also dope too with this like chanting of die in the background i'm creeping death Ooh. The final plague was 
the angel of death who killed the firstborn in every Egyptian household, except for those who followed God's instructions to avoid the plague. This verse can be seen as a reprisal of the earlier part of the story when the Pharaoh ordered the killing of every slave family's firstborn, just as for those who were previously wronged. Dang. It's cool that they, like, took it from the story of, like, the Bible and, like, a movie. I like that they, like, made a song out of this, like, fog that, like, kills people upon contact. <laughs> So he says, so let it be written, let it be done. That's the chorus. I got the lyrics so wrong. Nice. Live in fear, slaves, Hebrews, born to serve to the Pharaoh. Faith of the unknown one, the deliverer. Wait, something must be done 400 years. In the book of Genesis, it is prophesied prophesied God that the Hebrews would be enslaved for 400 years dang girl let's look at some of their credits what have we got here produced by Fleming Rasmussen Rasmussen written by Kirk Hammett is this dude he looks cool Dang. So what's Kirk's, like, connection to Exodus? Has he worked in Exodus? So he replaced Dave Mustaine, who went and formed Megadeth. Before that, he was the founding member of Exodus. Along with masterful solos, Hammett is well known for his, what the frick? So wait, what happened? So when he joined Metallica, like, did he just like, like leave Exodus to somebody else? Like, how does that work? Or is he just like st in both bands? Damn, can you imagine being in both Metallica and Exodus and be like, oh yeah, let me know your schedule for when you're touring. <laughs> Man, okay, I'm here for it, I'm down. Interesting, it really is such a small world. I just, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm just amazed. You have to let me know more. Like, did he just completely leave Exodus? Um, dang. Okay, so the next one we have is off of their 1986 album. So this is now going to be two years later. Um, so now we're in the point where they're like, officially releasing albums every two years. I think they're signed to a label now. They're really starting to get popular. They're in their prime. I've heard the name Master of Puppets before. Um, and I, I would assume, based on what I've heard and sort of seen, um, that it's one of their more famous popular records. But let me know what y'all think. Um, we've got two songs off of this album. It's, the first one is going to be Damage Inc. All right, give it to me. What are we working with here? You're starting with strings. I already feel like I'm gonna cry. This is beautiful. Sorry, it's like bothering me that I have hair underneath my headphone right now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's a pet peeve of mine. Oh, God. Okay, we're good. This is already phenomenally beautiful and I feel like I'm gonna cry. It's like hopeful but somber at the same time.
It almost sounds like, because there's a string noise. It almost sounds like he's hitting like a whammy pedal, you know, I'm doing the with the note. But I think there's like a little bit of synth, maybe just, just a tiny bit layering there. I'm going to rewind just a little bit because I feel like we're about to get into the climax. Beautifully mastered. Already, I can tell. I don't think this is the remastered version because they have two different versions on their YouTube channel. Uh, but blackened recordings. Already, the the production and the mastering is like so much better than what were what was in. Um, kill them all and ride the lightning and the vocal effect that he originally had for both of those two albums definitely has been tamed down and pretty much like deleted uh, um sounds super good is it are these like god's hands that are on this the album and then strings for the crosses Love it. Such a great just transition. Build it up to this thing, bring down everything, damage incorporated. I love it. I love that element so much. Dude, 
I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. You end it, dude. Dude, I. Spooner's twitching in his crate, and Code is completely on her back, all sprawled out like this. That's how I feel after listening to this song. I don't know what just happened. I'm gonna need to re-listen to that like ten more times. They just threw so much stuff at me. Like, dude, that was way more layered and technically, like, beautiful and diverse more than the other, like, two songs we just listened to. There was so much going on. And that breakdown, this whole different type of drum beat, and it just had this, like, really good groove to it. I don't know what he was doing. I can't remember. I'm honestly, there's so much for me to process, but he was doing some really awesome guitar solo. I think prior to that, and then they changed the beat and he was continuing to do this like riff. And then they just ended on one punchy hit. Damage Incorporated. I fuck with it. And he also said a curse word. No. Such a naughty word, y'all. Mm-mm. We are good Samaritans here. We don't curse at all. Okay? No cursing allowed. No, I don't give a fuck. So, I feel like I'm on an emotional journey right now. That just took me on a trip. Oh, all of their covers for these singles are, like, so cool. The skull with these, like, sharp fat things is the eighth and final song. Oh, that's their closing song. Ooh, we're gonna have to do a full album listen through now of Master of Puppets. Let me know down below in the comments if that's something that you want because knowing that this is now like the closing song for that record, that's a slap of a song to close with. Are you kidding me? It's perfect. They just whipped you with like so many freaking things and the solo sounded good. And again, that hard stop perfect way to like end a record and I am so curious now how like what the first song sounds like also can we talk about the intro to this song was like so beautiful Ooh, what if the first song you can spoil it for me if you want but does the first song have that sort of like ominous oh no I guess it wouldn't would it? It wouldn't have that ominous start. 
but I'm very curious to see like what that first song would sound like. Anyway, it details the titular savage and vicious corporation that enslaves the population and lays waste to humanity. Now that's metal. Damage Incorporated. Blood will follow blood. Dying time is here. Damage Incorporated. So many ads on freaking Genius. Can we just not have ads on Genius, please? This reminds me of that old eye for an eye ethos of Babylonian and Hebrew law. Not that these guys meant that by any stretch of the imagination, which is part of why it's interesting. I don't care what you have to say. Uh, fuck it all and fucking no regrets. Expresses disregard for life by this corporation would become a famous line for Metallica and reused in the chorus of Saint Anger. Ooh. Stepping out, you'll feel our hell on your back. Blood follows blood and we make sure life isn't for you and we're the cure. Honesty is my only excuse. Try to rob us of it, but it's no use. Steam rolling, roller action, crushing all. Victim is your name and you shall fall. Our generation after another works for Damage Inc. as servants and slaves. Life ain't for you and where the cure refers to life as being a disease and that they are purging. You step out of line making one decision against their ideals you'll pay for it interesting very cool song indeed uh master of puppets is already like yeah yeah instantly i can tell a difference in terms of mastering and production. And I know I've only listened to like one song off of Kill 'em All and Ride the Lightning, but definitely seems like they they are pushing some boundaries. They're trying things out, you know. It's it's definitely reminding me a lot of Megadeth for sure. And now that I've listened to Megadeth and Slayer, like, I can see how Metallica is, was like one of the, is one of the pioneers for metal slash death metal, or at least laying some of the foundation. But like Slayer, I feel like really is not a class of their own. There's stuff that Slayer's doing that Metallica's not doing that Metallica didn't do. Um, and that's not a bad thing either because you can tell that they, I mean, they're obviously very influential so that's, and that's not going to change. But I definitely do see a lot of like similarities to Megadeth um, in terms of like technicality and stuff. I'm really liking it though. I really liked this song. I think Damage Incorporated is definitely my favorite of the three so far. So the next one we have is also from Master of Puppets. Um, Sanitarium is going to be the one. Oh. Okay. Oh. 
Oh, we're emotional today, y'all. This is beautiful. I don't know what it is about Master of Puppets, but it seems like every single song has this beautiful instrumental beginning. The riff is like so pretty. Really reminding me of like Pantera, giving me some Morbid Angel vibes. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I love this song. Okay, let's continue. words I'm just I need a break I need a, I need a second because I feel like I'm gonna cry but I also have like other things going through my mind there's like harmonies that they're doing which sound really nice this definitely feels more it's gonna I don't know it feels more poppy in terms of like not pop music but like popular sounding like more mainstream but not in a bad way like what they're doing the chorus is just really really catchy and this is much different than what we just even heard like damage incorporated like it's a soft banger soft banger but we got those beautiful harmonies it's definitely given me I mean, Opeth is in a league of its own, but it's given me some Morbid Angel, Opeth sort of vibes in terms of the harmonies. And that solo was really interesting too. Really liked it, but it was definitely like, they gave it a lot of room. They kept the same sort of beat. So it wasn't super punchy. And also the way it's mastered it's, I mean, the way it's produced, I guess you could say, just a little buried. Just a little buried. I wish it was just a little up more. Keep him tight and makes him well. He's getting better, can't you tell? I love that they pick it up too. Ah, 
I like this part. Another crescendo ending. So they did the same sort of ending as Damage Incorporated. So with stops and this like sort of crescendo thing. The like deeper toned solo he had like layered on the bottom of that song towards the ending was like delicious. They're they're making some moves with this with this song. I can hear it. I can definitely hear it for sure. There's there's some things that they're doing that um, I can definitely understand. I'm saving my final thoughts for the end, but I'm noticing some things. I'm noticing some things. Welcome home, sanitarium. What does sanitarium mean? Welcome home, sanitarium. I just love this album cover. With like, I'm guessing this is like the hands of God. And like the strings, like all these dead people are like the puppets. Keeping with the grim nature of Master of Puppets, with songs about being manipulated, mistreated, abused, etc., this song is about being mentally abused in an insane asylum, which as early as 10 days in a madhouse was shown as a place that treats interns horribly. Which as early as. This song's inspiration comes from the other famous work about an asylum. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I think I've seen that movie. James Hetfield, what have the artist said about the song? The idea for that song came from the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Fade to Black worked well, and we wanted to have another slow, clean, picking type of song, this time with a chorus. I had trouble singing that chorus. It's really high, and when I went to sing it in the studio, I remember Fleming looking at me like, you're kidding. I said, shit, I don't know if I could do this. So I ended up singing it lower than I intended, but we put a higher harmony on it, and it worked pretty well. It sounds really good. Um, <clears throat> so I ended up singing it. Well, the riff for that song was lifted from some other band who shall remain anonymous. <coughs> anonymous, huh? So what, you ain't gonna give them credit? You're just gonna profit off of their riff, huh? Maybe he's from, uh... It could be from Dave Mustaine. Is there, like... <coughs> so, like, what's the... Is there, like, a feud between Metallica and Megadeth? 
or any of those bands, Exodus and Metallica. Um, also, like, how does how how do we feel about Metallica? Like, in terms of like the thrash daddies, and in terms of just like. Like, do we like Metallica? Do we... I'm assuming we, like, obviously respect them as, like, one of the founding fathers of this great metal nation, but I think we also are like, bro, you whack. Is that kind of, like, the vibe? Or are we, like, all hail Metallica? Um, because I... I feel like there's tea. I feel like there's some drama... And, uh, and I, I want to uncover the drama, you know? Build my fear of what's out there, cannot breathe the open air, whisper things into my brain, assuring me that I'm insane. This is once again, this once again is a, fuck off ad, is a reference, god darn it, is a reference to the allegedly impractical rehabilitation program set out by asylums. Furthermore, sanitariums that are designed to reform and care for mentally deranged patients can be the reason as to why many of these patients remain insane the living conditions inadvertently cause the protagonist to become fearful of the outside world as well as the facility being a constant reminder that the protagonist is insane thus deterring any progressive treatment sanitarium leave me be sanitarium just leave me alone. A desperate cry for the sanitarium to leave him alone as he sees himself as the only sane one. Interesting. Welcome to where time stands still. No one leaves and no one will. This can suppose that within the sanitarium it feels as if time never passes and no one will ever leave. This is due to the mental instability of the patients causing them to have a warped sense of time, as well as the fact that they will never leave because they aren't stable for the outside world. Interesting. Same person, Fleming Rasmussen, producing it. I think he also did um, Ride the Lightning as well. Interesting take. Um, I really liked that song. It definitely had a very different vibe than any of the other ones that we had. Um, and it's cool to hear the sound growth between, um, Kill Them All and Master of Puppets. So, it's definitely, definitely a good development. Okay. So, we are now down to our last song and justice for all so this is the title track off of and justice for all from 1988 and as far as from what i know uh this is the last good metallica album i could be wrong and if i am please tell me that is stuff that i have read from you guys my subscribers my viewers um a lot of y'all said metallica fell off after 1988, um, and really haven't made anything significant in at least a while. So if I'm completely wrong, tell me, you know, and we can kind of dive more in. I mean, I'm just here to experience, you know. So, and justice for all. So this is a 10 minute song. Ooh. 1988. All right. All right. I'm here for it. If this makes me cry, we've already had two songs that have almost made me cry. Oh, 
teasing me. doing here the drums mic'd beautifully they're very forward in this mix he's doing some interesting stuff you hear a lot of different things move and then they got this shaker that's just like right here those stops were very clean they were kind of teasing you a little bit I also liked the break between that like really beautiful little like I don't know maybe feel very tropical it's not tropical, but it made me feel tropical. That riff, and then they go into this drum section, riff again, drum. Hmm. I can already hear the advancement in the mastering. listen to it because I I'm I'm hearing it. So it's kind of going, boom, 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 you know, it's just a little too hot. Um, and they either didn't notice it when they were mixing or they were like, eh, fuck it. <laughs> but I could hear it. It's just a little bit. Um, it's little things like that. There's a, there's a section in Thank You Next by Ariana Grande, my girl, where in the chorus, not in the chorus, in the bridge, she is singing so close to the mic and her mic is so hot like really really hot and like you can hear just how freaking crisp the vocals are on that and it irks me to no end because it's like ooh, it's way too hot way too hot that's a side note i can hear it though <laughs> Yeah. 
really wrong about that bass sound, the mic sound. Is it an effect on his bass or is it the actual mic? I don't know, because I don't feel like I noticed that before the song. Either way, it's definitely oomphing those, these hits right now. Bum, 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 bum. I love this rip. Double bass. He's starting to flirt with the double bass. I think this is the first song out of the five where we've heard double bass. He's flirting with it. He's there's not too many sections. He's flirting with it a little bit, but now this is like the first full section where he's got it. Um, and I really like this little solo. This like slow down feels kind of murky, but in like a nice way. It's a good, it's a good like transition, good breakup. I can't believe this song is almost 10 minutes long. I don't feel like it's that long at all. Ending riff. They really like those hits. They have a lot of really good stops in this song. I can't believe it's 10 minutes long. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have to listen to this one. Honestly, I'm gonna have to listen to this one a little bit more. It's a, I think it's a grower. Um, but I think that I think it's the bass amp that's making that noise. I don't keep mentioning it, but it's bothering me. It's bothering me. I don't know if it's supposed to be in there or if they never heard it in there. 
but it's got a lot of layers. There's a lot of things that the guitarist is doing. He's got some really nice, nice uh, riffs in here, and I wish that they had explored it a little bit more. Um, I really liked the slowdown part. I really, really liked the intro. The stops were really clean, and they were very, like, bum, bum, bum. I don't know, I like it. It was a good, good mix. Um, but I didn't feel like there was anything vocally that was like keeping me, keeping me there. Dot, dot, dot. And justice for all. So is this like the first album that they was, would you guys consider And Justice for All the album to be like a really great album and then everything after that was like meh or would you say this album was kind of like the beginning? Would you say this album was kind of mid, it was kind of like it's good you know, and it's not bad, but it's not great, you know, would you think it's like, meh, and then after that they fell off, or is this, like, still considered a really great album? Let me know. Uh, this is the title track off Metallica's fourth record. This song deals with how the rich and powerful corrupt justice and legal system and abuse for their own ends, much to the detriment of the poor and vulnerable long endure the song remained out of circulation in metallica's concerts oh following the 1988-89 justice tour because as kirk hammett put i couldn't stand watching the front row start to yawn by the eight or ninth minute only 19 years later in 2008 it returned to the set list and its presence in all but one in the Metallica by request tour where fans picked what would be played shows and Justice for All found its audience eventually. Oof. That's a big oof. Because I, I'm not like I'm in Metallica's level obviously at all, but I, I currently am in three bands and I play I've played many shows, I play locally, and I mean, just a local musician doing bars and stuff like that, and it's always like cringy sometimes when those people like are obviously not paying attention to your music, or they're like, I don't know, it just makes you feel so like, <laughs> so I can only imagine being like Metallica and seeing like, oh gosh, the front rows start to yawn. I think that might be my one issue with this song. Maybe that's like why it's it's not grabbing me as much. It's because I feel like this one just didn't have the oomph that I'm looking for. It definitely was more like slow, but there's nothing wrong with slow either. But I also feel like if you're gonna do like a slower banger, there's gotta be something there that keeps you, you know, keeps you in there. Um, all right. Lady Justice has been raped. Truth Assassin. Rolls of red tape. Seal your lips. Now you're done and done in. Their money tips her scales again. The distorted legal system in the U.S. can be silenced by all the red tape implemented to benefit wealthy lobbyists and campaign donors, not the average citizen. The government really don't care about the non-elites, but only to receive a lot of money, including by such counterproductive laws. A parallel with the great Gatsby is Gatsby loves Daisy, but couldn't have her before because he was poor. Daisy only cared about money, and now that she, and now, and that's what she is really in love with. They do. This is a big oof of a song. The ultimate in vanity, exploiting their supremacy. I can't believe the things you say. I can't believe, I can't believe the price we pay. These powerful politicians and corporate managers don't really care about anyone except themselves. They only care about their success and cash flow. 
I mean, we know that. We know that already. Halls of Justice painted green, money talking. Interesting. God, I can't talk today. I can't read today. I'm just here for the moment. <laughs> So, I want to look something up. Hold on. Metallica. Is an American heavy metal man. Formed in 1981. Based in San Francisco. Why is Metallica cancelled? Lloyds of London for allegedly refusing to compensate the band for financial losses. Did Metallica break up? So they're not together anymore? I'm curious, just, I, I want to know, like, what the sitch is with Metallica. Because I feel like there's, like, there's drama within our, our thrash daddies that I need to be enlightened about. Um, it's really interesting that you have members from Slayer and Megadeth and Exodus, like, four bands, yeah, four or five, I don't know, within, like, the big eight, I'm gonna call them, our Thrash Daddies, uh, that are all, like, interconnected, um, so based on what y'all have said, this is my this is my overall opinion on Metallica and what I've noticed. So obviously they based on what y'all have said, they fell off and they let their ego and their fame get to their heads to where they just made more commercial stuff. Again, if I'm wrong and this is like totally off the wheel, please let me know. I want to know your thoughts. This is always a conversation. Uh, but that's what I've heard. And I can hear a little bit, at least in this first song, and actually in Sanitarium too. I liked Sanitarium a lot, but I could hear elements of more like commercial metal in there if that makes sense and some of you might shank me but it's just my opinion it's what I've noticed I didn't hear anything um within these like five songs that <laughs> I don't care if I make you angry that's totally fine I didn't hear anything in these five songs that really feels like they that just feels super, mm, I don't know, like I, I, I guess I'm just wondering what makes them the pioneer, one of the thrash daddies, you know, what is it that makes them one of the thrash daddies, and I'll do some more research, I, it's, I, it's not like I didn't enjoy what I heard, heard, I mean two of these songs made me almost cry, so I did enjoy what I what I heard, but I feel like the difference between like Slayer and Megadeth is Megadeth's entire Rust in Peace record, granted I listened to the entire album, was just a technical masterpiece. And every single solo and everything was just like beautiful. And it was just like I could see the elements of like I could see and hear, like, yeah they're laying down the foundations for something that's that's thrash that's death they've got the grit for it slayer for sure is like number one absolute pioneer for death metal based on what we've discovered on this channel like no doubt about it even more than megadeth like everything everything about slayer was literally pioneer for death metal so i guess i'm just wondering with metallica because based on what we've heard, I want to do more diving into this. I heard a lot more, like, commercial stuff within Master of Puppets. Um, and which Sanitarium, I think, is the most commercial sounding, I feel like. Um, in terms of 
of the harmonies. It sounded more like laying down the foundation for like new metal. I don't know. Am I like super wrong? You can tell me. I'm open to your honest opinion. And if I piss you off, let me know in the comments. I'm fine with it because I'm just, I don't know anything about it. So I want to know what makes Metallica a thrash daddy. Like what, what made them lay down their foundation? Lay down the foundation. Um, because I guess they, maybe they were one of the first bands that did like, I don't know. I don't know. I want to dive more into it. I want to do more on it. But uh, upon first impressions, uh, I think they're good. I think they're good. I'm not blown away though. I'm not blown away. I think that that's my big thing. And I think like, I mean, I couldn't not continue our journey through like the thrash daddies without doing Metallica and I know they're like there's so many reactions on YouTube of them I just wasn't super blown away with what I heard Megadeth blew me away Opeth blew me away so did Death and so did Slayer I just don't think that there was anything super out of the box however this being said I really want to dive more into Master of Puppets. And I would be down to jump more into like Kill 'em All because I really liked the sound of Jump in the Fire too. I really liked that song and how like old school it was. Old school sound sounding. It just, it was very much like Black Sabbath, like just good true rock and roll, which I'm like super into. So Damage Incorporated was good too with that like whisper element that they had. I really liked Master of Puppets, so let me know if you want more Metallica on this channel, or if you're, like, done with Metallica and you're fine just moving on, um, to more, to more bands, <laughs> essentially, so, uh, that's, that's the video, if I pissed you off, let me know, please, you know, tell me more stuff about Metallica. You already know this. Thank you so much to Alonzo Tarango. Tarango. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much to Alonzo for recommending these songs. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much to everybody who voted in the poll um, and got Metallica voted up. Uh, let me know stuff about them in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, night, and I will see you very soon. God. <laughs> okay, I love you. Bye, guys.